Hello everyone, Gerard here. So I've recently installed the BIR Mobile Tin Verifier app for Android. So I tested its features and here's a quick review and everything you need to know. As of this recording, the app is available for download on Google Play Store, whereas the iOS version may still be under development and is currently unavailable. Installation of the app is pretty straightforward. You just need to go to Google Play Store, search for the app name, and hit install. Once installed, you'll be able to see the app icon on your phone. The first thing that you'll probably notice is the app name. The announcement for a new app named BIR Mobile Tin Verifier App was done on the BIR Facebook page. On Google Play, the app is called Tin Verifier Mobile Application. Looking at the installed app on an Android device, the name is relatively longer compared to some of the common apps we install on our phones. Some devices may not even be able to show the full name of the app. In my opinion, you can probably do away with the mobile application in the name since app on Google Play are all mobile applications. Also, considering the name and choice of icon, you wouldn't know that the app caters to taxpayers of the Philippines. Tax identification number or TIN is a term used by other countries as well. You'll only be able to see it's from the Bureau of Internal Revenue when you open the app and see the mobile app disclaimer and the text that comes with it. To access the main screen of the app, you'll need to read and scroll through the disclaimer. Click on the checkbox and click on proceed. As I've used the app more than once, I had to go through these steps every single time. Now, I would suggest that the app can save cache data using shared preferences to let users go through this once during the first time the app is opened. Now, once you're on the main screen, you'll see two icons on the app bar and a blue button on the center. Clicking on the home icon does not do anything while clicking on the information icon loads the disclaimer. Normally, we see the home icon for apps or websites where the main page displays a new set of data when you click on the home button to trigger a refresh. Some apps have their logo on the left side of the app bar instead of the home icon, which helps reinforce the app's identity. As for the information screen, it could also include details about the app like the logo, name, and version with the privacy policy and disclaimers. To use the app's main function, you'll need to go through another screen by clicking on this blue button. When the screen loads, you're greeted with a pop-up which tells you that the system can only cater to individual taxpayers and is available from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Click on Proceed and the app finally takes you to the main verifier. If you've accessed the app beyond office hours and click on either TIN Inquiry or TIN Validation, a toast message will appear displaying no available agent to respond on query. Now, assuming we are within the office hours of a given workday and we would click this thin inquiry, this will be displayed on your screen. To be honest, I've waited for the reply and got it for a couple of hours later. Conversely, in using the thin validation, you'll initially be looking at this screen. Throughout your transaction, you will be talking to an agent. You'll need to provide data that the agent would use to verify your TIN. Take note that the agent would just be an anonymous one. Using the app, you would have no idea who you are currently talking to. Chat support channels usually have an agent's name displayed. In my case, I'd like to know who I'm currently talking to. The agent knows who I am from the information that I provided from the verification. So it would be fair if I would know who's on the other end of the line. Anyways, I got replies from my inquiries and the last thing that is displayed on the transaction screen is this. Initially, I thought it was a button that I could click, but it just tells me that the transaction is done. It took a while, but that means that the transaction was successful. Overall, it's a first good step in providing Filipino taxpayers an alternative in verifying their tax identification number. But in my opinion, it still has a long way to go in terms of design and functionality. If you've already used the app, let me know in the comment section below your experience in using it. And that's it. So as always, a huge thanks for watching. Let me know if you are interested in watching videos like this, wherein I review government agency applications. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. So this is Gerard. Have a great day.